Okay, so now in this particular lesson, we're going to talk about how heat is calculated. So we talked about what it was. Heat is the transfer of energy because of temperature difference. Heat moves from things with high temperature to things with low temperature. And now we're going to talk about how to calculate it. So this is an equation. You're going to see it a lot. I'll probably give it to you. Um, at least Ms. Packard will. I don't know about anybody else, but I probably will give it to you. And Q equals MC delta T. Okay. Q is the change in heat. M is the mass, usually in grams. Specific heat, that's a constant. I'll give it to you. And then delta T is a change in temperatures and usually in degrees Celsius. So change in heat depends on the temperature. And the way we calculate delta T is we take the absolute value of the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Because again, heat is because of a difference in temperature. Difference means subtract. Okay, and we are going to use absolute value. It just makes the math a little bit easier. So you'll never have a negative number. It has a mass M and a specific heat capacity. They use the symbol C. Again, I don't know why they don't use S. It is what it is. So you want to take a liter of water out of the fridge at 0 degrees Celsius, and you want to boil it at 100 degrees. How much heat energy? That means we're solving for that Q thing. So Q equals the mass, 1,000 grams. There is a specific heat, 4.18 joules over grams degrees C. Now I wrote it that way on purpose instead of like this, and I'll show you why in a minute. And then the delta T is the change in temperature. It went from 0 to 100, so it changed by 100 degrees C. Now the reason why I wrote the fraction the way I did for the unit for the specific heat is to show you what happens to the units. When you multiply this all out, you're going to get a number. 4.18 times 1,000 is 418,000. Yep. So you're going to get a number, 418 thousand. Now we need to talk about what units are going to have. Well, degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius are going to cancel out because that's on the bottom of a fraction. Grams and grams are going to cancel out. So my units that I'm left with are joules. Now you might think, oh my god, that's an enormous number. Okay, I will tell you right now, that is the equivalent of one food calorie. One calorie. Okay, Snickers bar has like 270 calories. This is one food calorie. So a joule isn't a whole lot. Um, it's kind of a tiny little thing. So let's compare that number. We had 418,000 for that one. We're going to do the exact same thing with a 1,000 gram block of copper, and it has a much lower specific heat, ten, more than 10 times less than water's. But we're going to calculate how much heat we're going to get. So the mass times the specific heat. And then the temperature change again is 100 on here. Now this is just a coincidence, the same thing. But you have um, 386, 0.386 times 100 times 1,000. You get 38,600 joules. Now, the amount of heat here compared to the 418,000 is off by a factor of 10, right? Same mass, same temperature change. The big difference is the amount of heat that the copper can store is significantly less, 10 times less, because its specific heat is more than 10 times less than the specific heat of water. Okay, Metals don't hold a lot of heat. Water holds a lot of heat. Okay, So let's go ahead and see if we can solve this one. How much energy? Again, you're looking for Q. So Q equals mass, 150 grams specific heat. And I'm not going to do the units um, because the units are going to be joules at this point. You should kind of figure that out. And I'm raising the temperature by 75 degrees. I don't tell you what the initial is. I don't tell you what the final is. All I'm doing is saying it's going up by 75 degrees. So 150 times, uh, times 4.18 times 75. And you get 47,000 25 joules. Okay, not too worried about sig figs on this. Like I said, a joule is nothing. Okay, this is a tenth of a food calorie. It's nothing in terms of numbers, quantity. All right, now this one's a little bit different. Okay, I'm giving you the specific heat. I'm telling you what the temperature change is, but I'm not telling you what the mass is. That's what you're solving for. This number right here, see that unit? That unit tells you a lot. That is my heat. So 14,500 joules equals 
My mass, I don't know. I'm going to call that M. 0.126. And the temperature change is 120 degrees. Again, we're going to subtract so we get a positive number. So I'm going to just do the algebra here. I don't care if you guys show it to me or not. Um, so to solve for M, I'm going to divide by 15. Divide by 15. And I get a mass of 959 grams. Okay. So... There are four variables. Well, really, there's five variables, but there's four variables. Q, M, C, Delta, T. I can give you any three of the four and ask for that fourth one. And technically, this is really five variables. There's TI and TF, um, and I'll show you one like that in a minute. So this is an example of one. I'm giving you the mass. I'm giving you the C. I'm giving you the Q, and I want the final temperature. I'm giving you the initial temperature. So Q equals MC delta T. And here's how I would solve this one. I would say, all right, there's my heat, 3756. My mass is 75.3. Specific heat, 0 0.140. And now here's what I do. Rather than say TF minus TI equals delta T, I'm just going to solve for delta T. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to do this algebra. You get 10.54 times delta T. Solve for the change in temperature. Delta T equals 356. Okay, so now here's where I'm going to think about this for a minute. I'm going to go, all right, I added heat, absorbed heat. TI is 22.5. So you can either do the algebra and say, all right, this equals TF minus TI minus 22.5. Or you can think about it and go, you know what? If I'm adding heat, TF is going to be a lot greater than TI. Matter of fact, it's going to be equal to the sum of those. It's going to increase in temperature by 356. So whatever method you use, in this case, I would be adding the two numbers together, and I would call TF 379 degrees C. And again, I'm not too worried about sig figs on this. Just kind of pay attention and think about it a little bit. This is something you're familiar with to an extent. It's something that you guys should be able to handle. Okay. Um, this one, how much heat? I'm just going to show you this one because it involves kilojoules. So Q is 225 grams. Specific heat of water is still the same thing. It is joules over grams degrees C. Temperature is 100 degrees C. So you cancel out your units. You got 14 times 24.50 joules. Okay, that's joules. To change from joules to kilojoules, I know it's been a while since we've done this, you put a 1 where you see the 2 letter. 1 kilojoule equals e to the third joules. So e to the third goes there, joules cancels out. Basically, you'll get 94 kilojoules. Okay, so just pay attention. It's just different kinds of problems. Okay, now when we're doing this in the lab, this is something that we're going to do as an actual experiment. Like I said, it is, this is a constant value. It's something you can look up. And we're going to determine the specific heat of a piece of metal. The thing is, it's hard to measure the temperature of a metal. Um, you can put a thermometer on there, but, you know, you can't sit it inside or anything like that and get an actual accurate reading. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of metal, copper, bronze, iron, I don't even know what they are. You're going to figure out its mass, and you're going to put it in boiling water. Now, the water is probably going to be close to 95 degrees C, because we're in Colorado. You can't get it to 100 degrees C unless you use a pressure cooker. That will give you the initial temperature. That's how we're going to measure the temperature of our metal, is we're going to put it in boiling water and let it sit for a long time. Eventually, it will it'll have a temperature of 95. Okay, and we know it's mass. Then we're going to take that hot piece of metal without touching with our fingers, and we're going to take a measured mass of water at room temperature, which is probably, say, 20 degrees, something like that. And we're going to dump that hot piece of metal into the water that is relatively cooler, not as high a temperature. And what's going to happen is the heat from the metal 
is going to transfer to the water because it has a higher temperature. High temperature to low temperature. That's the way heat goes. And what we're going to assume to make the math easier, and this is key, you may assume that the heat gained by the water is equal to the heat lost by the metal. Now, that is not necessarily true, but it makes the math way easier, and we're just going to have to make that assumption. And that is absolutely crucial to being able to solve these problems. Okay, so this is an example of what you're going to be doing. You're going to take a piece of a metal, you're going to heat it up really hot, and then you're going to put it in some cold water. There's a specific heat, its initial temperature. After the mixture reaches thermal equilibrium, meaning they're at the same temperature. They've been sitting together long enough that the metal that's sitting in the water has the same temperature as the water. They tell you the temperature. Now, there's a lot of numbers here, and I, I get confused. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them out into some kind of logical something, and I'm going to just make a little chart. I'm going to say mass, specific heat, Ti, Tf, delta T, and Q. All my variables. Remember, there were five variables, right? So the mass of my metal is 135. Mass of the water is 75.2. The specific heat of the metal, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to solve for. Specific heat of water, 4.18. The initial temperature of my metal, very hot, very high temperature. And my water, very low temperature. Now, they've been sitting there for a while, and after a while, that piece of metal which is sitting in the water is going to have, it's going to collide, and it's going to transfer its kinetic energy to the water, and it's going to continue to do that, and continue to do that, until they both end up at 31.9 degrees C. So that's an important recognition, that the TF is equal for both of them. And then you can calculate the change in temperature by doing TF minus TI and getting a positive number, 9.4 for the water, and 62.7 for the metal. Okay, and notice the metal changed temperature a great deal more than the water did, and that's because its specific heat is going to be very much smaller than waters. Water can store a lot of heat without changing temperature. That's what that 4.18 shows you. Now, to figure this out, what you have to do is you have to remember that thing that I told you on the last slide that is crucial, that the heat that the water got came entirely from the metal. We're going to make that assumption. So we're going to assume that those two numbers are the same, not just for the final temperature, but also for the heat that transferred between them. So what I'm going to do is I can calculate the heat for the water because I have all the numbers. I have 75.2, I have 4.18, and I have 9.4. Oops, go back. So when I do that, 75.2, 4.18, and 9.4, oh wow, I have a really big number. And that's not a big surprise because heat is a nothing of a unit. So 2955 joules. That's the heat that the water got. That goes right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to assume that that heat that the water took in came from my metal, which gave it up. And so I'm going to use that number and work backwards to solve for the specific heat. So 2955 equals the mass of my metal, the specific heat of my metal, and the temperature change of my metal. So when I do the algebra, and I'm not going to show it to you here, if you struggle with that, just go ahead and ask a teacher about it. And you get 0 0.349, and the units are going to match the units for the water's specific heat, joules over grams degrees C. Okay, and again, very much smaller than water's, and that was evidenced by the fact that it changed temperature more than the water did, because the water can store that heat. All right. Go ahead and see if you guys can set this one up. Again, the table is metal, water, mass, specific heat, Ti, Tf, delta T, and Q. Put in the numbers and see what you can solve for. Keeping in mind that Tf is equal and Q is equal. All right, so I'm going to put the numbers in. Mass is unknown to the metal. The water is 81.2. 4.18, 30, oops, 
22.5, 37.2. This is 0 0.38, 93.5. Thirty-seven point two. Okay, so calculate the change in temperature. Thirty-seven point two minus twenty-two point five for the water is fourteen point seven grams of degree C. Where did I get grams? I don't even know. Um, Ninety-three point five minus thirty-seven point two, fifty-six point three. Again, big temperature change for that metal. Relatively small temperature change for my water tells me, you know, to look at the relationship between them, right? But I must have a pretty large mass. So the Q for the water equals the Q for the metal. So the Q for the water is 81.2, 4.18, and 14.7. So so 49.89. All the heat that the water got came from my metal, and like I said, it's still a big temperature change, but I think that mass must be pretty, I think it's probably much bigger than 81 kind of thing. So 49.89 is the heat from my metal, the mass of my metal, 0.38, and the temperature change is 56.3. And I was right. So the mass I got was 233. Now the units for that will be grams. Okay. And so again, like I said, I could figure that out somewhat qualitatively just by looking at the temperature change and the specific heats. Okay. This kind of a question would be extra credit. So I teach AP Chemistry. This is something I would expect them to be able to do, but I would not expect you guys to be able to do. It's done kind of the same way. Metal, water, mass, specific heat, Ti, Tf, delta T, and Q. Put in your numbers, 135, 37.5, 4.18, 0.387, 97.2, and 25.3. Okay, so now, what is the final temperature? That's what I'm looking for. Now remember, when a piece of metal that's very hot is put in the, to the relatively cold water, the heat transfers until the high temperature one drops down to the, a medium, somewhere in the middle between the low temperature and the high temperature. They give up heat. The high temperature gives up heat to the low temperature until they kind of meet in the middle and they get thermal equilibrium. So that final temperature is equal for both of them. I don't know what they are, so I'm going to call it X or T, whatever you want. So the delta T here is X minus 25.3. Remember, it's got to be a positive number. This one's going to be 97.2 minus X. Now, the reason I subtracted them differently is I know this number is somewhere in between. Maybe it's 35. Maybe it's 40. Maybe it's 50. Maybe it's 60, 70, 80. But it's somewhere in between them. So in order to get a positive number on this one, I have to do the high temperature minus the final. And in order to get a positive number here, I have to take the final minus the initial number because I know that final temperature is going to be bigger. And then the last little trick for this is, again, to recognize that the two heats are the same. Unfortunately, I cannot calculate either one of them because I'm missing that final temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them equal to each other. And so what I'm going to have is 135 times 0.387 times 97.2 minus x equals the water, 37.5, 4.18, and x minus 25.3. Now this is just going to require some algebra, so I'm going to multiply these two together, the 135 times 0.387. I get 52.2 times 97.2 minus x. And I'm going to multiply those other two numbers, so 37.5 times 4.18, and I get 157 times x minus 25.3. And at this point, all it is is distribution and recombining with like terms. So I'm going to kind of run through that pretty quick, but I am going to distribute, and I'm going to distribute here and distribute there. And what I end up with, a little bit more complicated maybe than you think, is 5073. 
5074 minus 52.2x equals 157x minus 3972. Now all I need to do is combine like terms, put the x's together and put the uh, numbers together. And when I do that and I end up solving, I get an answer of 43 for a final answer. So x is 43 degrees Celsius. Does that make sense? Well, it needs to be, be between those two numbers. So yeah, that does make sense. But like I said, extra credit. Very challenging, mainly because of the algebra. Makes it pretty challenging.